Hi, Paul Tchaikovsky here, Developer Advocate at VMware. Today we're going to go through installing Harbor, which is a container registry, onto Kubernetes, and we're going to be using Contour, Cert Manager, and Let's Encrypt to make sure we have a secure endpoint to connect to. We're going to be using this guide on the VMware Tanzu Developer Center, and I'm just going to basically step through it, run all the commands, and make sure we end up with a working container registry. So let's go ahead and get started. We have Harbor and Contour. Uh, we're also gonna be installing Cert Manager, which lets us manage certificates. That ensures we get a actual signed trusted certificate, which is, makes it easier for Kubernetes to trust it and connect to it. So we have a bunch of prerequisites. I already have these installed, I hope, uh, but we'll quickly go through them, Helm 3, Kubernetes cluster. I actually need to create that. I'll do that in a minute. Uh, and then we either buy a domain name or we can use zip.io, which is like a dynamic DNS provider that lets you kind of just prefix zip.io with the IP address and it provides wildcard DNS for that. So let's go ahead and create a Kubernetes cluster. And so the instructions here call for a uh, Google uh, GKE cluster, but I'm going to go ahead and do something different. I'm going to create a a Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster on AWS. So I'm gonna go a little bit aside from what the guide says, but this should prove out that Kubernetes is kind of that thing that lets us kind of push workloads to different places and have them still work the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, GKG create cluster. And obviously this date is no longer correct. It is currently the 12th of January. I always like to date my clusters so I have a pretty good idea how old they are. And if they're older than a week, I always, almost always blow them away and create a new one for this sort of dev test work. So I'll go ahead and I'll run this command. Now this will actually take a few minutes. So I will pause the recording, get myself some coffee, and I will come back to you when it has finished creating. All right, and we have our cluster here. So we should be able to go ahead and get our credentials uh, like so. All right, and then we simply run our new context and we can do a say get nodes. And there we go, we can see we're connected. We have uh, three worker nodes and one master node. Uh, and then we wanna create a directory uh, to store all of our manifests and stuff in. So we'll go ahead and do that. You can see here, we're just in a scratch directory called harbor install. And then we need to do a few things. We need to add the uh, Bitnami for Contour. Uh, we need to create a namespace. So we'll go ahead and do that. We need to uh, add a Bitnami Helm repo, which I already have, so it's gonna skip it. But nothing wrong with running again to make sure we've got the most recent uh, version of the repo in case there's been any updates. And then we can just go ahead and install it. And there's no custom settings we need to set or anything for a basic install of Harbor. So we can just do this. Uh, we have it installed, it's given us some instructions here. We'll go ahead and clear the screen, keep it clean, and we'll just run this command here, uh, which is gonna let us kind of watch as pods come up and running. You can see we're already quite a ways there. We have half of Envoy running uh, and Contour is starting. Um, well, they're all running. It's just they're not all fully ready. You can see we're nearly ready now. So I, I'm going to assume that that's going to finish coming up. And let's move on to the next steps. So first of all, we need to know what our domain is going to be. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our ingress IP address and we're gonna plug that into zip.io. So let's go ahead and just run this command right here. Now, one thing about using Amazon is I actually get a host name back instead of an IP address. Uh, so I can look that up. Uh, okay, it's gonna take a minute to actually give me a resolution. So we'll go ahead and we'll wait a moment um, we can go ahead and export our email address. I'll just use my throwaway Gmail account there. Let's have a look at 
comes on. All right, so this is going to take a minute to start resolving. So we'll use export domain equals. And so this is one of the examples where while Kubernetes does provide the same API service to me, there are some details that can leak from your cloud provider. Uh, this being one of them, a domain instead of an IP address. Um, but as you saw, that was pretty easy to figure our way through. So just checking, we now have a domain, which is that, and we have email address, which is that. So we have our environment set up. So now we're going to set up DNS, except we say skip this whole section if we're using zip.io, right? So if I wanted to use my own DNS that was stored in Google Cloud, um, managed by Google Cloud, I could actually follow these instructions and get like my own like registry.pol.io or whatever my domain is. But I'm sticking with using zip.io because there's no cost there and it's a little bit faster to run through. So we can come straight down to cert manager. So like before we do a create namespace uh, and then we do Helm repo add and Helm repo update. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll just do, do it like this. Helm repo update. Oh, huh. For whatever reason, it's trying to add a thing there. That's fine. Helm repo update. Now you notice I skipped this create namespace because uh, I want to show you with Helm, by default, it does not create namespaces, Helm 3 at least. So if I run this without doing the namespace first, I should get an error, right? Namespace not found. I can actually do this, create namespace, and just let Helm do it for me. So this is definitely an option. And you know, it cuts down on a couple of commands we need to run. So there we go, cert manager is done. And again, you can see the only thing we've set is this install CRDs equals true. So we haven't really needed to do anything out of the box, like change too much settings wise. And you know, this is a good sign that a lot of these tools are now just kind of working out of the box. Now with Cert Manager, you need to tell it where to collect certificates from. And you do that with issuers and cluster issuers. The big difference is that cluster issuer is cluster wide, whereas issuer is specific to a namespace. So we're going to use these here docs to create files. And that way, if we want to later, we can save these files up to Git or whatever, and we have a reusable set of manifests. Uh, you can see uh, cluster issuer and giving it a name. And then we've set a namespace. We don't actually need to set a namespace there because it's cluster issuer. So we should probably clean that out of the doc. Um, but that's OK. It's not going to hurt being there. And you can see we're using the staging API from Let's Encrypt. Uh, and we're telling it that we have a contour-based ingress controller. And we pass it our email address. And that's so Let's Encrypt can send us expiry warnings and things like that. So let's go ahead and run that. So that's our here doc pasted. Uh, and so we can do a Let's Encrypt. And you can see my email address has come from the environment variable there. Right, so we'll go ahead and we will apply that. We can do get cluster issuer. And there you can see let's encrypt staging and it's already ready. Uh, and so that is a good start. So now we can install Harbor again, create namespace. We could do this as part of the Helm command, but we'll go ahead and do it. Now this is where with Harbor, we are going to actually uh, change a few things in the Helm values to make sure that uh, we get the cluster we want, sorry, to get the uh, application we want. And most of this is around our certificates and domain. So you can see here we're setting existing secrets because we're going to expect Let's Encrypt to do this for us. And you can see under annotations, Cert Manager will be looking at these two annot this annotation here uh, and will basically know what to get for us. And then we're setting our external URL, our hosts and stuff using, again, the domain. So that'll become registry.ipaddress.zip.io. So let's go ahead and paste this. Uh, and then we can have a look at it here, harbor values. So you can see, again, 
we've got our domain has been slipped in there, like so, right? And that is all we need to do there. So we can go ahead and do the Helm install. Sorry, I should have pumped that up to the top so you can see what's going on. We go Helm install, it all happened, and then I hit enter a bunch of times. So sorry about that. You can see uh, we get this back here. So it's actually telling us how to access our app. So you should be able to access through this URL. And this is how we can get our username and password. Now I provided a password, so this will give me the password I provided back. So let's go ahead and run this, just to make sure, right? Uh, so username, admin, password, password one, two, three, four, five. We can now watch our pods come online. Uh, and this will take a, a little bit of time uh, because obviously Postgres and Redis need to start up before a lot of the other things can start because they need to connect to it to store information, right? So with those two up, uh, core should come up. And in fact, core is up now. And I think the last one is job service. And job service needs to talk to the core API. And so it's always the last one to, uh, to finish starting. But we're most of the way there. So I'm going to assume that things will come good. There we go. Job service has started. So Harbor is already running. And that is in less than 90 seconds. So that is pretty good. So now we can just run this little thing here. And this will give us the username, password, URL, just to keep things simple. So we'll go ahead and paste this in. And there we have registry and we have an admin and password. So let's go ahead and spin this up in, this is a fresh private browser, just to make sure I haven't got any cookies or anything like that that's gonna interfere with me. So we go here. First thing it's gonna do is say my connection is not private. And that is because we use the Let's Encrypt Staging API, which is not going to give us a fully trusted certificate. So that's fine. We'll go ahead and just proceed. We'll fix that in a minute once we know we're working. And the reason we use staging first is because we want to make sure that everything is installed and everything is working before we use the production APIs, because the production APIs have a lot more rate limiting around them. And the last thing we need, we want to do is rate limit ourselves out of being able to get a certificate. So that's where we use staging, make sure everything is good. And then we can more or less just swap the certificates out and we'll show that. Uh, but let's go ahead and log in and make sure that uh, password one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And so we're in. So I'm not going to give you an exhaustive look through Harbor, but by default, it has a library project, which has public access, which means that I don't need to put authentication details into my uh, Kube cluster in order to be able to access um, images that are here. But obviously I need to authenticate to push images. So let's go ahead and look, there's nothing here. So we need to push an image in there. Now, I won't do that just yet. Docker login. Don't think we want HTTPS in there. So admin, password, one, two, three, four, five. And you can see we get a failure, right? Because the certificate is signed by an unknown authority. So let's pop back to our instructions. So we're gonna go ahead now and create a new cluster issuer. And we're gonna call that let's encrypt for fraud. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we can do a KFI-F, let's encrypt fraud. And then we can do a get cluster issuers. And see now we have prod as well as staging. Now, what we wanna do is in our harbor values, instead of requesting things from staging, request things from prod. And so we can just do it with a, uh, a set here. Or we could do, uh, cat harbor values said uh, to harbor values dot yaml prod right so now we have prod harbor values that uses let's encrypt prod and then we'll just move 
other values to stage, other values of YAML. So what are we doing next? So next we're gonna actually delete Harbor and reinstall it. And we can safely do that uh, because uh, we have PDCs. So if we do this, you can see that all of our important persistent data is actually on disk, Postgres, etc. And when we do the Helm delete, it doesn't actually delete those PBCs. So when we do the Helm install again, it will re reconnect to those. So let's go ahead and run these two commands. So Helm delete, we'll get those warnings, no, no worries. Oh, and then I need to actually change this to, uh, was it prod? Now we could probably do a Helm upgrade here instead of doing a Helm install. But I just kind of wanted to show the persistence of the storage that happens on Harbor regardless. So it's deploying. So we can do this watch get pods again. Uh, and we can see that it's kind of coming up. Again, it's going to be a little bit quicker than the first time because it doesn't have to create a new Postgres database. It's reusing the same one. But it's still going to take a minute. There's Postgres up. Um, so the rest will come up, but we're really looking for core to come up because this is the thing we, uh, we're we going to connect to uh, and get kind of the, be able to do a Docker push to be able to access the web UI. So we do need this to be one of one up. Uh, and you, so you can see we now have the checkbox connection is secure because we have the valid uh, certificate now. So we're going to go ahead and log in. I think I just... Nope, I got that right. All right, so we're logged in. There's our um, project. So we're gonna go ahead and authenticate via Docker now. So uh, Docker login admin password. And we can now do a, well, do a Docker tag. What have we got? That will work just nicely. We'll go ahead and do dot three dot one forty one forty eight dot one one five, and then we can go ahead and do a uh, Docker push. And you know, as I can now do it, I could do the Docker login and Docker push uh, because it's a valid certificate. It just works. I didn't have to do anything adding a CA or anything like that. All right, so that is now pushed up to our registry. So next we can use this image and we can maybe just create a deployment. So just in the default namespace, create deployment. Um, test image that. I think that's what we need. Right, so deployment created, so K default pods. So here we go, there's test and it is running. So if we do a describe pod test, oops, dash n default. Uh, you can see it did a pull from our internal registry. So clearly that has worked. Again, now that we have a valid certificate, Kubernetes is happy to just go and fetch the image for us. So that is it. That is uh, a Harbor registry running on Kubernetes, secured with uh, Contour and uh, Certificate Manager with a valid Let's Encrypt certificate. Hopefully this was useful. Thank you so much for watching.